Hey, Penn. Mm, yeah? Do you think Lev and Joe were soulmates? So, I mean, just me and that term soulmate, I have my own kind of like philosophy around that. But yeah, I mean, in, in, in a sense that we mean it. In a in a in a culture that otherwise doesn't talk much about souls, <laughs> I feel like I feel like yes, they they're they're perfect for each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like we don't really take souls into it, except in relationships, except in right. love. <laughs> when I'm finding somebody good for me, so I you know I think that they were as compatible for each other as they would ever find. Going into season three, what was the one storyline you were most excited to explore? This marriage and what a relationship looks like long term. It was really interesting to explore the ways in which Love put her attention towards Joe this season and trying to preserve or revitalize the relationship. Because it's such an impossible task, like we know Joe at this point, but she's just not done with the relationship, you know? I was probably looking forward most to see like how that go from in some way really trying to make it work to him killing her. Like what what were the things that he ultimately tried to do and failed to do and then how it was going to happen. I couldn't imagine the way that it would happen that would like give love the right send off. It would do justice to the whole two seasons of arc that they had together. So that was like probably the most exciting thing to see unfold. I think it was also really interesting to explore love having an affair, you know, while simultaneously trying to preserve her relationship. That all was very uh, interesting and, and surprising, given and the complexities of the, the ways in which that relationship resembles her relationship with Joe as well as her relationship with Forty. Yeah, that You feel like that it made it harder for you to believe love? Because there's a way you talk about love that to me is like, you're so good at understanding her intuitively and defending her and like not judging her and i'm just curious like with the affair and her honestly trying with joe did you feel like that was you know what i mean no it really felt like an act of in, in order to justify it right like in her mind it's kind of an act of desperation she's really at her wit's end like she's really ready to like lose her mind and it's this mm. like little respite that allows her to build up her ego and her sense of value clearly this season it really comes to a head how much value she puts on being seen as a woman who is desirable to men how many times did you work with wardrobe and makeup and everybody and hair to like because there was this shift for Joe had one too, but I think it was a little less so. Like love really went from one place to another. I know the actor is always some part of it. And I just recall seeing you because we were shooting some scenes out of order. And like on the first couple of days, you had to go right to like mid season arc where you had like hair and makeup in a way that I'd never seen you. So that was kind of a shock. Was that fun to explore with love or was it uncomfortable? And how much did you like enjoy the process of collaborating with hair and makeup and wardrobe and everybody? I really, really enjoyed that process. I felt like I had a lot of say, and that was really cool because I didn't feel like I had that much when we first started, to be honest. Mm. So it felt really good to feel empowered within that process of the fact that I've actually been heard and like that um, people are, are digging it and excited about what they're being able to create. But also it was just like, it just felt perfect. Like, of course she becomes something else like that's the solution you know like don't look in like just fix fix outside just become something else and of course she's still the same person at her core she still has all the trauma she's experienced now she's trying to run from it and she's stripping herself of her individuality and conforming to um the society and she resents it because is she like actually her most, you know, confident, sexy self? No, you know, she's just playing a role or society's idea of what sexy is, but she's empty inside. She's like the most self-conscious she's ever been. She's like 
feels the most invalidated by the world. She's so disconnected with her husband. She feels inadequate as a mother. You know what I mean? But she's mm. doing all these things. It actually reminds me of season one in a way where it's like, if you really take this as a story about a woman rather than a show about this guy, mm -hmm. it's very sad. It's very, it's very sad because it's their downfall. But she's also making these choices. Like, don't feel too sorry for her. She's making yeah. active choices. She has the freedom to make these choices. And this is what she does. It's easier than looking within herself. It's easier than admitting her faults that she's made in her life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. When did you find out what was going to happen above? Who told you and when? I knew that I wasn't going to make it past my second season and I kind of assumed that I would be killed. I don't really remember exactly right, right, right. when I heard that for the first time. When you first came onto the show back in season two, I actually think you knew more than I did. <laughs> there were some About things what this you, season would be? I think so, yeah. Just there were certain things you had to be aware of mm -hmm. that I wasn't uh, initially. But knowing that she was going to die, do you think that had an effect on your performance throughout the third season? No, and I think that that's why when it eventually happened, it felt like stopping a like running train. Do you know what I mean? I found, mm. I think that that's why I felt emotional at the end and why it was painful is because I wasn't acting the scenes with that awareness. You know, I wasn't trying to like mm. pull at people's heartstrings and be like, you know, just so that when she or, you know, dies that we like really care. You know, I just tried to play it honestly and as like manically and intensely as she acts. And in the end, she's so manic and she's so ready to launch into this new chapter of her life after killing her husband and disposing of the body. Like she's like, I'm gonna find something new for myself. Like this man has destroyed me. And then it's just like, stop you know and mm. all that energy was still like fully in me from like everything that had happened and the momentum of those six months that we had been working and yeah it was pretty intense i didn't expect that because i wasn't thinking that it would affect me or i i i can underplay the the energetic spiritual component of what we do um sometimes because yeah i think that's no okay. totally totally <laughs> um but yeah yeah so what do you think it is about love that made her such a, like a formidable, not just opponent, sometimes partner, you know, sometimes she was not just as equal, but also she would one up him. Like, what are those things about her that you think made her like a twin pillar of the show for two seasons? Yeah, I think part of it is the intelligence and perceptive nature that they've and their like their survival mechanisms that they've developed through their neglected and abusive childhoods but yeah. also the way they deal with it they're massive victim complexes that lead them to feel like the world is against them and so the two of them at one point you know really found solace in each other because the world was against just them together but i guess eventually they kind of lose that bond, but that still really, I think, fuels so much of their antics, you know, and really, I think, makes them really comparable to each other. It makes me think that <laughs> next season, mm -hmm. people are just going to be like, where's love? Everybody's just going to be tweeting memes like, the show sucks without love now. <laughs> what was it like when we, you know, we're shooting these scenes in the dining room and you haven't been in a in the position in which you have to i guess you're in danger a lot but like in which there's really a head to head you know yeah how was it like to not only have to speak in a scene first of all and then <laughs> yeah, um <laughs> so hard <laughs> um but also go head to head with you know that person that is really comparable to his you know really disturbing nature. Well, actually what you said earlier says it all, like there are no scenes that Joe has to talk in as much as the scenes with love. A actually, that's that says it all right there. Joe otherwise is just in his, he's in his kingdom. Even if he doesn't have the upper hand from the audience's perspective, from the show's perspective, he does because we're in his world. And then when he's not, I mean, you know, those are the scenes where like, there are no thoughts actually. 
there might be some now, but like I feel like there's very few thoughts to interject. So that means he's present. That means he's pulled out of his domain. I really didn't want to feel as though I had the upper hand. I actually kind of let all of his insecurities come out. So for me, it was like a humbling in a way, or that's not quite the word, but it's something like that. If you had some choice, I guess, in some fantasy yeah. <laughs> world that we're not living in, <laughs> how would you think that it would be a fun way to end Joe's journey? I used to say that he should be killed by a woman, but then I, I really pretty soon after like revised that because I don't think that's justice for the woman who has to do that. I, I, it's, a, it's a great question and I'm really not sure. I honestly feel like that has to be the question for the rest of the series because I think he found true love in the love of the character. Basically demonstrated that if he's not willing to do the thing, then he's never gonna get it. So now it's like, all right, what is, where is their reconciliation with just justice in the world? Because he's not gonna get it with a person that's not the way things work, I think, for him. So I don't know, it's sad. It's sad to think about, like, should he just be miserable? Should he just be miserable? Because that's like, I don't know what justice is with him. I don't know. Like, should he be forgiven? Like, I don't, eh, it's crazy. I know it's a very interesting um, thing to think about. And I think that's one of the fun things about the show is really not knowing what you want to happen, but just taking yeah. it in. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs>